All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, webinar. We're talking about creating your personal brand and the success story of you. I'm so glad that you selected this workshop um, because, you know, a brand, when you think about a brand, a lot of businesses have brands. You think of uh, McDonald's and you think of the Golden Arches, you think of Nike, and you think of the swoosh and their slogan, just do it. But when it comes to individuals, we also have a personal brand. It's the thing that comes to a person's mind when they see a picture of you, the thing that comes to their mind that they remember of you when they say your name or they hear someone says your name. And so um, whatever they think doesn't just happen overnight especially if it's very good and positive, it takes time. And so today we're going to talk about how you can create your personal brand and the success story of you. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Let me get my slide here. Awesome. Let's jump in. So this is for um, any student, especially young adults who are entering into the workforce. If you want people to know who you are, uh, recommend you for jobs or other opportunities and talk about your successes more than they talk about your failures, then this is for you. Um, so in the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to talk about 10 tips for creating your personal brand. And also I'm going to introduce for the very first time uh, the seven pillars to the success story of you. Um, I'm really excited about this unique way of looking at success and, and how do we create successful futures for ourselves. So stay tuned for that. Um, well, my name is Brandon Griffin, uh, before we move forward. Um, and I uh, got started in my career at a very early age. I started my first business when I was 10 years old. It was um, a desktop publishing business. I created offline marketing materials like business cards and brochures for uh, businesses and friends that I knew. And uh, then my second business was a website design business. And so now 20 years later, I'm, I've been an entrepreneur and I'm still in the digital marketing profession. And so um, I really encourage as people, especially students to get started in trying to figure out what they wanna do early in life. Um, and that way you can spend more of your time actually on top of your game than trying to figure it out. Um, I've created programming for uh, young professionals at companies like USA Today uh, that talks about uh, generational diversity and uh, just how you can be your best in the workplace. And I'm, I'm really passionate about helping young adults especially achieve their professional growth goals. So that's a little bit about who I am. Um, but let's focus on you today and let's talk and dive into the 10 tips for creating your personal brand. All right, so if you don't have it, go ahead and get your pens and paper ready. And we'll jump in with number one. So number one is understand your current identity. Your current identity, you wanna know who you are. Uh, what do you like? What's important to you? What are your strengths? What motivates you? Um, what could you spend hours doing and not get tired? Um, all of those things are what make up your identity. And uh, that's going to be helpful to know as you move forward uh, to uh, work towards your successful future and as you're creating your brand. So the first step is understanding your current identity. And current is important because I'll talk more about that uh, towards the end. So just make a mental note of that. Two, consider your future. Um, what do you want to be known for? You know, more than who you are today, your personal brand also is a roadmap for where you want to go uh, 10 years from now. Uh, so think about, so think about that for a moment. Where do you want to be in 10 years? When someone sees you on the street, uh, what do you want them to uh, say while they're introducing you to someone else? Um, consider your future because whoever you want to be, whatever you want to be in the future, 
starts with some of the steps and the action items that you take today. So that's really important to know. Three is define your audience. Um, you want to know who you want to target so you know where to go and what story to tell them. Um, you know, if you want to target uh, photographers, you may find your audience on Instagram. Or if you are a photographer, um, in order for um, a customer to understand all of what you're capable of, you may need to have your own website where you can showcase your entire portfolio in a way that Instagram won't let you. So you need to know who your audience is. Uh, in the same manner, if you are trying to uh, get a job, then you probably should have a presence on LinkedIn because about 85% of recruiters are on LinkedIn and that's where they uh, source talent from. And so you would want to make sure that you have your LinkedIn account really optimized and ready to go if that's your goal before you may spend more time on Pinterest. So knowing who your audience is very important. Number four, follow the leaders. So um, who are, when you think about the industry that you, you're in, the things that you wanna do, who are the people that are currently doing it? Um, and find out who they are and follow them. Follow them on social media, read articles about them, read their books uh, so that you can understand who they are. You can understand some of the things that they did in order to get to where they are. Um, but at the same time, it helps you understand what they did or what they're doing and how you can do it in a different way, in a way that's more unique to you. Um, so follow the leaders. Number five, be a sponge, be a sponge. So this is a, a carryover from number four. Once you've identified those leaders, you wanna be a sponge. You wanna try to get as much information as you can from them. Um, you want to reach out to them, ask them questions, uh, find mentors, ask for their perspective on the future, uh, the future of the industry, um, trends, and use that information to kind of help you navigate the steps that you're going to take. Um, ask them for their networking tips and their educational tips. What are they reading? Um, try to get inside their mind so that you can uh, understand uh, some of the things that you could be doing as well. Number six, and I know you've all have heard this, you always want to have an elevator pitch ready. That's 30 to 60 seconds of you being able to say who you are and what you're looking for or how you can help uh, in a very concise manner. And they, a lot of people say, you know, it's called the elevator pitch because it's the thought is, if you um, if you are if you get into an elevator, and you're with the person who can, you know, make or break you, give you the opportunity of a lifetime, but you've only got 60 seconds to get from the first floor to the seventh floor because that's where they're getting off at. If you only have 60 seconds of time with that individual, what are you going to say? And so that's what the whole elevator pitch concept is about. And I would encourage you to figure out how you can say who you are and what you need or what you can offer in at least 30 seconds. Because I've had so many times happen in my life where uh, the person that you're looking for, the person that can provide you that opportunity is on their way to the car or they only have 30 seconds to talk to you because they were in the middle of talking to someone else. So you've got to be very quick and to the point. Um, but you want to practice those things in advance. Uh, so make your pitch. That's number six. Number seven is you want to grow your circle. 85% uh, of all jobs are filled through networking. And, and, and in most cases, um, hiring managers have an idea of who they want to hire before a job is ever posted onto a website. And so what you want to do is you want to grow your network. Um, you want to know 
what types of projects and initiatives people are working on. You want them to know what your interests are, what your uh, talents and skills are, so that as people are thinking about projects and they're putting their team together in their mind before they put it on paper, they think of you uh, and, and keep you um, keep you included on conversations and opportunities uh, oftentimes before they get published on websites. Number eight, ask for recommendations. Um, this is really, really important too. Um, it's not easy for people to, uh, one, it's not easy for people to hear positive feedback about themselves, especially if you're really humble. And humility is definitely uh, a good trait to have as a leader. But uh, there comes a time when you really need to have this, your success stories amplified in order to get to the next level. And so um, one way to do that is to ask for recommendations. I've found that an easier way to ask for recommendations is to actually put yourself in a situation where you are applying for a program, an award of some sort, uh, and they're requiring you to um, have a letter of recommendation or they're requiring you to be nominated. And so that often gives you the extra push that you need to put yourself into that uncomfortable position of reaching out to that former supervisor, that mentor, and asking them to write a recommendation on your behalf. And oftentimes when they write that letter recommendation for you, uh, you'll find out that um, they saw strengths in you, they saw things in you that you didn't even realize. And it just gives you an added layer of, of confidence and motivation to want to continue to do great things. My thing is, you don't want to wait until um, you know, you're up against a deadline or uh, a program to ask for that recommendation. Make it a habit of asking individuals for you know, letters of recommendation on a regular basis. Um, because people, um, people leave jobs, people retire, uh, and people forget, <laughs> quite honestly, people forget sometimes the um, contributions that you make. And so if you ask them for a recommendation, um, you know, reg not regularly, but in a regular occurrence, um, that can be really helpful for you and your career. And I'll also say before we go to the next one is, is that um, oftentimes you can ask them to just kind of generalize it. So don't make it a very specific, I, I'm recommending um, Sarah for um, to be a member of your program, kind of keep it a little general. So that way you can use it for multiple programs, multiple awards, etc. All right, number nine, securing your brand secure your brand online. Um, if you aren't online, you know, if you don't come up in a Google result, uh, chances are you don't exist, right? So you want to consider that when you're creating your personal brand. Um, when you are thinking of a name for yourself, whether it's your username or your business name, you want to come up with a handle that you can um, secure across at least the majority of the social media channels. And so um, you, I'm sure you've seen it. Someone said, uh, follow me on Facebook. I am um, best photographer in the world on Facebook. I'm best photographer in the world, 1993 on Instagram. I'm best photographer underscore 513 on Twitter, right? That's complicated, it's confusing. And so when you're thinking about your brand from the beginning, before you even put it out there, you know, come up with some different names for yourself and then go and check to see if those names are available, at least on the popular channels like uh, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. Um, and then if they're available on all of those platforms, register them, secure them, even if you don't plan on using it uh, because you don't wanna get down the line and then um, you do wanna use it on that channel, but someone already owns that channel, or you don't want people to register with a name that 
looks just like yours or is yours on a popular social media channel like Instagram and start posting pictures that you don't approve of or that aren't consistent with your brand and you have people confused. So uh, this, this really probably should be like number one on this list because it's that important when you're coming up with your brand to make sure that you can secure all social media handles for that username whenever possible. Um, and then you wanna monitor your content you want to monitor your content that you have online to make sure that it's consistent. Um, and don't be afraid, especially with things like Instagram, to uh, have a couple of different profiles so that, you know, if this is your profile for um, your family and friends, make it that. If this is your profile for um, all of your food recipes and uh, your, the pictures of the food that you like to cook and eat, then make it that. Uh, so sometimes you don't have to have all of, you know, your content on one platform. It gets confusing. You get the picture. And the last thing I'll say is uh, out of all your social media channels, especially as young professionals, make sure you finish and optimize your LinkedIn profile. That's really important. Make sure you have your picture there. Make sure you have experiences listed there. Uh, make sure you have uh, LinkedIn even allows you to have a featured video on your profile. And so uh, make sure you activate all of those elements because it really helps when recruiters are going to your LinkedIn account to find out more information before they reach out to you. And number 10 is honor your brand offline. So uh, this is just important because your brand is more than an online persona. It's how you carry yourself at home, in the office, and when no one you know uh, is looking at you. So um, things like just doing what you say you're going to do, you know, delivering on your action items, being action oriented, those are things that add value to your brand, which really is just a code name for your identity, okay? And so you want people to speak positive of you. Um, and when they speak positive of you, it's not just because of what you post on Instagram or TikTok, especially in the workplace. If you want people to speak positive of you, it's, you know, did they do what they said they, they were gonna do on time? Uh, was it of good quality, right? Uh, were they professional? Those are things that um, contribute to your brand in an offline manner. So just uh, consider that, honor your brand offline. All right, so these were the 10 uh, tips for creating your personal brand. Um, so I hope that those were helpful. Now the next thing I wanna share with you as we wrap up um, is, a, is a model of looking at success that I've created called the seven pillars to the success story of you. Okay, we, we are gonna have a whole lot of time to to really dive into this the way that I like to, um, but I'll connect with each of you, I promise, uh, to follow up on this. And an easy way to remember this is uh, the acronym SILVERS, SILVERS, S-I-L-V-E-R-S, S-I-L-V-E-R-S, seven pillars to the success story of you. Uh, and I created this because I've spoken to so many uh, business leaders, um, all industries, entrepreneurs, millionaires, billionaires, and I'm always asking them, as other young professionals do too, what did you do to get to where you are? How did you achieve success? And what I found is that so many times, no one actually really knows how they got to where they are. So many often times, they uh, they didn't plan to, you know, be the leader of the company, just things started to fall in place. And so when, so I sat back and I thought, okay, so how do you navigate to success, even if you aren't quite sure of the path? And I looked at these individuals and, and their success, and what I found is that there are seven pillars that we can refer to in our life. And that if we focus on developing ourselves in these areas, then we can better navigate our way to success. And 
it's our version of success. So remember, I told you in one of the steps to follow the leader, right? You do want to um, look at what they're doing and understand their journey. But also you have to understand that their journey is not yours. And there are some things that have happened in your life that make you unique and they make you great. And it's because of those things that you are capable of achieving uh, things on even a higher level than the leader that you're looking at. But you may never achieve it if you are looking at them and not focusing on what your strengths are. So these seven pillars, if you develop yourself in these seven areas, it, it will help you achieve the, the, um, the successful future that you're looking for. And so uh, very quickly, uh, spirituality, spirituality, this is, you know, how center, how centered are you? Um, you know, um, yep, how centered are you? Um, how well do you know yourself with identity? We talked about that. That's really big. Uh, leadership. Can you lead yourself? How well do you lead others? Um, how do you motivate individuals? How do you stay motivated yourself? Um, vision. Oftentimes, uh, you, um, oftentimes individuals don't um, have a vision for themselves. And so if you don't have a vision for yourself, then you can't lead. What are, where are you leading people to? So vision is really important. You need to know what you're capable of achieving. Uh, entrepreneurship, you know, everyone doesn't have to be an entrepreneur as in owning a business, but everyone should think like an entrepreneur uh, because you are your own product. You are your own business. So what are you going to do to make sure that people want to buy your product or hire you or recommend you for an opportunity? What are you going to do to increase your value? Um, and what are you going to do uh, as it relates to relationships? You know, how do you navigate? Um, first, I'll say, you know, it, relationship starts with yourself, which also goes to spirituality and identity, uh, because oftentimes the way we treat ourselves is how others treat us. And so um, relationship is a part of our success, too. Um, and then we have to figure out how to navigate our way out of toxic relationships and toxic relationships can be friendships they can be family they can even be mentors yes there are bad mentors uh, and then skills um, what skills do you have what steps do you take to enhance your skills what skills are you going to need in 10 years 15 years and uh, what plan are you putting yourself on to um, achieve those things uh, these are these are the pillars so when you think about your success story, you've got to achieve in each of these areas. And spirituality is very broad. And I'm not talking about religion, you know, um, spirituality, identity, leadership, vision, entrepreneurship, relationships, and skills. These are the seven pillars. Um, so I want to go more into that, but I can't because of time. So, uh, but these are the seven pillars. And I, I assure you, these alone are enough to help you create the successful future that you desire. So we covered a lot within the last 40 minutes. I've gone over the 30 minutes that I, I promised I would try to get all this within. Um, but now you have a choice. You have a choice. You can go down the path and create a great personal brand and, and, and know your identity of who you are and communicate that to the world and work on your success story. Or you can let it go in one year, out the other year, it's totally up to you. You have a choice. But what I do know is that no one is successful. Um, no one gets to success alone or by themselves. You need help. And so I'm committed uh, to, to helping you. Um, my team and I have set aside time in the next two days to speak with each of you personally about um, how you can apply everything I talked about to your life starting today because that's important. You don't want to just take the notes and then come back to it a week later. You need to take action because if you don't take action, you, chances are you probably won't. 
and you'll stay in the same position as you are and you won't do anything with what we talked about. And so I know how it is when you go to conferences and workshops, uh, the speaker is great. And then once they leave, you're back to normal. No, that's not the case. I don't want that for you. Um, and so whatever your biggest challenges are, I promise you we've seen it and we can help you overcome it. Uh, so on this session that we were scheduling some time um, to have with, with all of you, we'll work with you to create a step-by-step -step plan to uh, create your personal brand. Or if you've already started to create your personal brand, um, let's take it to the next level. Where do you wanna take it? We'll talk to mo you more about where you are and identify some key goals that we'll, um, that we'll begin to work towards immediately, okay? Um, and yep, the cost is absolutely free. All right, so no charge or anything like that. And, but it's not for everyone. So it's free, but it's not free for everyone because um, you have to be a member of FBLA or PBO and you must have attended the 2020 National Leadership Online Experiences. So if you meet these two criteria points, then you can schedule that time with us. And so why are we doing this for free? The answer is very simple. We're doing this because we love giving back. I love giving back and helping young adults achieve their professional growth goals. And um, the Future Business Leaders of America and PBO are organizations that are very dear to my heart. And so if you're a member of the uh, organization, I definitely want to support you. All right. So, so that's it, everyone. So who's ready to get into the hot seat? I hope uh, you're ready to get into the hot seat. Remember. Um, the offer is not available to everyone and spaces are limited. So just take a second and go to genzacademy.com slash NLC20 and sign up there. And that way we can get started on helping you create your personal brand as well as um, taking you down those seven pillars of the success story of you, okay? Awesome. Uh, also on that website, you'll have my information. So feel free to reach out to me and I, I look forward to connecting with all of you. All right. Thank you for thanks for coming to the workshop.